Hey, this is Colton with Custom Excel Spreadsheets, and today we're going to look at how you can create an invoice template in Excel for your business. Once you've finished your template, you can export it to PDF and get something that looks like this. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is open up a blank Excel spreadsheet and go ahead and click Save so that you don't lose any of your work. And then we're just going to start building out what this would look like. And we're not really worried about formatting or anything at this point. So I'm just going to start typing in some general information. Uh, here this would be your business name and I'll copy some information over just for the sake of time. But you would just type in each of these cells, your address, uh, phone number, fax, website, email, and so on. And then you, maybe you want to have a bill to section that would be your client's information. And I'm going to put some brackets that would represent blank information to be added later. This information, of course, wouldn't change. This is your business. But each time you use this template, you would enter the new client's information there. So now I've got some basic information. Maybe over here we want to go ahead and set up a block for invoice where we can put some details like the invoice number and the invoice date and amount due. And then we'll do terms as well. And of course, you can add anything to this uh, that's specific to your business. I'm going to put some example information here to show you how it could work. I'm going to open up this column here so we get uh, get it a little bit wider. You can see the invoice number there. And then we can drop down and start building out the, the main part of the invoice, which is going to start out with maybe a product ID. Again, this would be specific to your business. But most people are going to have a, a product ID or name and then some sort of description. Followed by over here, we'll skip some space there to give us room for the description. We'll do a unit price, quantity and uh, total. So now that we've got that laid out, I'm going to go ahead and apply some borders just so we can get a, get a feel for the span over which this table will be created. And you can see we've got a whole bunch of borders in here we won't want. The description field is generally one that you're going to add a lot of information to. So I'm going to go ahead and use Excel's Merge and Center. So to select all of these, you can just click and drag. And then we'll go up to the top here to Merge and Center and use Merge Across. Now you've got enough room where you can type in some descriptions there. Typically those can get long, so I'm going to select that and also change it to Wrap Text. And that way if I get wordy in my descriptions, it will wrap around and uh, be visible when it's printed. I'm going to open up these borders a little bit as well to leave room for these columns. And let's do some simple formatting, getting these centered up. Generally, your unit price and quantity will be centered. Uh, I like to center the totals as well. And then we'll apply for the total since that's going to be money. We'll use the currency, which is an Excel built-in formatting. So I'll go up here, click the drop-down arrow, and apply currency to that one. And we'll go ahead and drop in some information here just so you can see what it would look like. All right, and now here's where we need to get to some formulas. So you don't always want to have to do this manually. You'd rather just type in a unit price and a quantity and have it automatically populate. So I'm going to type in equals, which is what you use in Excel to start a formula. And then I'm going to select the first cell I want to use in my formula, which is the unit price. I'm going to use the asterisk to, for a multiplier symbol. And then I'll do the quantity and hit Enter. And now you can see it's automatically calculating that total there. So I can now click in the bottom right part of this cell and see how my cr uh, crosshairs change to a smaller view there. And then I'll drag that down. And that's just going to copy that formula down. Alternatively, you can do a control C to copy it, then select the cells you want to paste and do a control V to paste it in there. So now we've got our formulas set up. And of course, at the bottom of the invoice, you're going to want to have some totals. So let's get that set up as well. Typically, that would look something like maybe a subtotal which will use the sum formula for this. So again, I'm going to click equals to start my formula, then type in the letters SUM. Doesn't matter if you do all caps or not, Excel will still recognize it. And I'm going to do a parentheses to let it know I'm about to select a range. And now I want to select that whole range, close my parentheses, and then click enter. So now I'm getting a subtotal. So if we filled in some more unit prices here, you can see that that subtotal will automatically update. The next thing I want to do is taxes. So if we're going to apply taxes, and this is where you would type in your specific rate, maybe you've got an 8% tax. So I'm going to do equals 0 0.08 asterisk to do my multiplier and then select the subtotal. And that'll get me my tax. And then the total for the invoice would just be the sum of those two items. 
And so if you wanted to add any kind of discount, so let's say we, we wanted a, a discount above the tax line, you could add in a discount here, and um, maybe you're going to apply a, a $10 discount. And so you could have your subtotal, and I should put that as a minus since it's a discount. Now your subtotal is going to uh, go ahead and take that discount out, for, or your total rather, will go ahead and remove that discount from the total price. So. In just a couple minutes, we've already gotten laid out the basics of what we want our invoice to look like. Now I'm going to click in the bottom right part of Excel. There's this page layout button. That's going to help me see if it's all fitting on one page and will it print nicely. And you can see that this, this isn't quite making it. So I've got some columns that are too wide. So one thing I can do is shrink in this uh, column right here that didn't need to be quite that wide. Then I'm going to take column A over here and shrink that down as well. We didn't have anything in that column, so we can always move that. Um, a little bit these inner columns as well we can manipulate those as much as we need to to get this on the same page so i'm going to shrink these down a little bit that's just a manual way of doing it now you can see everything's fitting on the same page and looking good uh, however we do have a lot of room at the bottom so we might say well let's go ahead and expand this so that we have plenty of room for however many items we might need so i'm going to select just left clicking and dragging select several rows over here then i'll just right click in this green space on one of the row numbers and select insert that's going to insert several columns for us and so, or rows rather. Uh, so now we have we're filling up the page a little bit better. But notice our formulas are missing here. So we need to copy one of those formulas, use the shift key, or you can um, click and drag to come down here, and then do control V to paste. And I'm also going to copy these cells and paste them as well so that we get all the same formatting and everything for those rows we just inserted. So now we've got an invoice that if we went to a print preview is going to print nicely on one page. Quick tip, if you don't want to see all of these zeros, there's a few ways around that, but a, a quick fix if you don't know much about Excel is just to hide those. So let's say you finished your invoice, you only had two items and you don't want your client to see all these empty or these zeros. Yeah, you can just select all of those and type on your keyboard, hit the alt button, then type O R H and that'll hide those. Alternatively, you can select over here by clicking and dragging and then right click on any of those numbers and click hide. And so that would be a way to, to get that cleaned up where your client or your customer isn't seeing all the blank rows for when you print. So now we've got the sheet built. You can apply whatever formatting you want. Maybe you have some particular colors that you'd like to apply to it to get uh, close to something like what we had here. And that's really easy, just using Excel's uh, shades up here for the fill in each cell, for example. But let's say uh, you wanted to take it to the next level. I want to show you what's possible in Excel. So here's what you could do, uh, either if you have the expertise or if you'd like to, to get a template that does this. So here's the invoice in Excel format that we looked at earlier. Notice with this, and I, this one, I've got a drop down menu for my product number. So I can just select a product number. It's automatically going to fill in the description based off of what I selected there. Go ahead and pull over unit price. That's all being fed from a pricing table here. So as I get new products or pricing changes, I just update it in this one place. Then when I go to create my invoices, it's really simple. I'm just selecting product numbers or product IDs, and it automatically is going to fill in the product description and unit price for me. Then all I have to do is type in what my quantity is, and notice those totals are summing automatically. Uh, if I wanted to discount a particular item, I could apply a percentage discount on that, and all of that will be factored in at the bottom. This particular template also has this checkbox under this E column, which is where you can apply uh, whether or not it's tax exempt. So if this item was tax exempt, meaning taxes didn't apply to it, I could click that, and that will automatically be taken into account down here where the taxes are calculated. So that's just a quick overview of, of what you can get in Excel. Uh, in this particular template as well, you can change the invoice color. So if I wanted to go with a blue color, I can select that and it automatically updates everything. If you'd like a copy of this template, just click the link in the description below, which will take you to customexcelspreadsheets.com. And you can send us a message and let us know you're interested in the invoice template. We also provide custom Excel design services. So if you'd prefer to have us design an invoice specific to your business, we can start one from scratch that is 
made for your types of products and your clients that has your data sets in it, as well as your branding and formatting. Or if you'd like to take this template and have us make some modifications uh, to it for you, just send us a message and we'd love to talk to you about it.